can't, you know, the end up in, indeed impose a very significant financial burden on the company. Mm. Uh, was the company's, you know, business in a shaky position right now? I think probably the management feels reluctant to go along with that option. Um, it, it, it might also be, you know, the initial step in a long process of negotiation. Mm. Um, it, so. Uh, uh, this is not the final chapter yet. I think, you know, still going to back the negotiation and were the, the terms. Mm. But uh, mm. uh, certainly, you know, I think, as I said, I think the union is in a fairly strong position right now. Mm. But, but I would expect eventually this will be resolved. That, you know, Boeing reportedly is losing a billion dollar a month. They can't prolong this for too long. Mm. Uh, so uh, at some point, the management will probably cave in and uh, you know, come to terms with what the union is demanding. Mm. Well, there are some analysis saying that in recent years, Boeing workers' confidence uh, ha on the company has uh, eroded partly because of, uh, you know, the crisis surrounding the 737 MAX uh, programs and also uh, that the company um, spends so much on, you know, the executive salaries, but uh, you know, not taking, uh, taking enough care of the workers. Um, what is your comment on that? I, you know, from the point of view of the uh, unions, uh, certainly I agree with that. I think, uh, mm -hmm. you know, this goes to the the, the, the heart of an American version of capitalism. I mean, so mm -hmm. uh, the, the the executives, the the people, of the the insiders, uh, take a one share of a, a take a windfall and then take a line share of a profit. Mm -hmm. um, um, so. Um, you know, the, the the union has this position. It's not surprising at all. Um, it, mm. It's uh, um, you know, mm. it's, I mean, you have to keep in mind, Boeing mm. is, is is very much like a state-owned enterprise. Actually, I mean, <laughs> the, the joke is that mm. Boeing is probably America's largest state-owned enterprise. Even though you know, in, in substance, it's not a state-owned enterprise, but it operates very much like that. Mm. Right, it's heavily on government contracts um, and uh, way. The management mm. stand is, is very much like a bureaucracy. So, uh, mm. um, you know, I think uh, Boeing needs some revolutionary transformational changes at this point. Mm. Well, as, as you said, these uh, standoffs uh, come during an already very challenging time for Boeing, uh, you know, which has become the focus of multiple federal investigations over. Uh, it's uh, it's a number of issues like the 737 Max plane. Uh, is Boeing's management going over a crisis? Why or why not? Yeah, it, it, I think the old management's already been thrown out. They introduced a new CEO. I think the uh, company needs uh, some fresh air. Introducing a And it's better than the thing that they sell at three times that price. And he said, you know, we're, it, it, it doesn't matter when we have the brand, but they have everything else. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what they, they're afraid of. So this, this EV situation is going to be very, very difficult for these automakers if there, in fact, are going to be uh, tariffs on uh, anything that is exported from uh, China and imported into Europe. Uh, that could spell big trouble uh, for the domestic uh, groups because they're producing also overseas. So they have no choice. If they don't, their competitors will. Thank you. That was Ina Tangan, senior fellow at Taihe Institute. Coming up, we talked to a Chinese immigration inspection officer on China's recent visa waiver policy for international travelers. This is World Today. Stay with us. Hello. listener of the world today. In my opinion, the world today is one of the best China radio programs. In the world today, we can get the best news and analysis in what is happening now in the world. Please come join us. Hello, I am Dr. Digby James Wren, a political analyst and international relations scholar specializing in China area studies. World today offers 
perspectives on China's politics, economic, technology, and society. Today's team of reporters and contributors provides valuable information from all of the world's major economies. I hope you can join me on World Today. Best insights and news from China, on China, and help to build a better understanding of China's role in the world today. Welcome back to the show. I'm Liang Kun in Beijing. China has experienced a 30% increase in border crossings during the third quarter of 2024. According to the National Immigration Administration, the number of inbound trips made by foreigners rose nearly 50%. In October, the country expanded visa-free country to travelers from four additional European nations, including Portugal, Greece, Cyprus, and Slovenia. Since China announced the visa waivers last year, the country has seen a boost in its inbound travel. Speaking with our reporter, Sorry Xi Zhang the political instructor with Immigration Inspection Team 5 at the Beijing General Station of Immigration Inspection, shared some updates. Come on, let's take a listen. 